happy Sabbath, family. It's lovely to see you all here, and I'm sure that you are glad as well to be in the church uh, in God's holy day. I would like to uh, welcome every one of you, and thanks for coming in, uh, in this church worshiping us today. To those who have come for the first time, we are delighted to greet you. Happy Sabbath, and welcome to our church. And those who are online, we welcome you as well. Uh, I don't want to miss this part as well because uh, the church in Minorca, the Advent, uh, Minorca Adventista de Septu Medea, we'd like to greet, their, uh, greet you their happy Sabbath as well. Feliz Sabadu, that's what they said. Um, so I'll be giving you the announcement first and then, um, uh, and then we'll go into our main program. But first of all, we, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't like to miss this to welcome the uh, Discovery Mountain team who have given their much effort to come and join us this Sabbath. It, 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 this has been a long time. We've waited for this. And now they're here, and uh, we praise God for that. We, we will continue to pray for their ministry. And there are four of them who have come all the way from uh, America and one from Ireland, if I'm not mistaken, so four in total. So we welcome you and thank you for your uh, dedicated effort for the Lord. So you have, if you have your bulletin with you there, you have the announcement there. First of all, uh, the programs are there for this day. So in the afternoon, we'll have a wonderful time with the children. So we wouldn't miss that one. We are always uh, uh, looking forward to this because we want our children to enjoy. Next is uh, next Sabbath, we have our Irish Mission Day of Fellowship. So um, we'll be in Dublin for our church service. But this church is also open for those who are not able to come. Then uh, the, the Voice of prophecy, prophecy will be starting on October 14. For, for, for more information, it will add a, more information will follow shortly. Then uh, obviously reminding you always that every Wednesday we have a... Uh, uh, midweek prayer and meeting uh, starting 7.30. You have the Zoom number there. And then uh, I think that's all for today for the announcement for the, uh, for the, for the coming days uh, to come. So I would like to request you to set our minds for worship, to open your Bible to the book of Psalms 84. I want you to open your Bible, please, to Psalms 84, verse, verses 10, 11, and 12. I'm reading the King, King James Version. It says here, For a day in the courts is better than a thousand uh, for a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than a than to dwell in the tents of the, the wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No, no good thing will be withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give praise and thanks to your name for this wonderful Sabbath day. For the sunshine, and for bringing up, bringing up uh, our visitors here, all the way from America, who will, uh, deal, uh, who will grace us with the programs for the children. We thank you for the ministry. Father, we would like to ask you to open our hearts and our mind as we start or begin our worship today. For this I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Into it, I would like to request everybody to stand.
may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, so me and the girls are excited to share with you our theme song from Summer Camp. It's one of the worship songs this morning. Um, it's called Praise. It's by Elevation Worship. The theme of our camp was Mission for God, and this song really reflects that. So we're all really excited to share it with you, and I hope you enjoy it and sing along. And then we'll sing My Lighthouse after.
thank him. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. God wants us to give with a cheerful heart and a generous spirit. God doesn't want us to give because we feel that we have to. It pleases God to see that we can give because we want to see his kingdom grow. Let's give our offerings joyfully today. Before we bring our offerings, think of one thing you love most about God. Then praise God for that one thing when the offering plate comes to you. The deacons will now come forward to collect our tithes and free will offerings.
Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things, and your word makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory. May these gifts bring shelter to the homeless, comfort to the sick, rest to the weary, and hope to the hopeless. Just as you multiplied the offering of fish and loaves that were given freely for others, we pray that you would multiply these, our offerings to you, and accomplish with more, more than we could ask or imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, our scripture reading will be coming from 2 Kings 5, verse 3. I will be reading from the New International Version. It says, She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of leprosy. For those who are able to kneel, I'd like to invite you to kneel with me as we offer our family prayer. Our eternal God, we give you praise again, Father, for this wonderful day. We thank you, Father, that you brought us in this church to have a wonderful experience with you. We'd like to ask the Father that may you fill us with your Holy Spirit today, that we may be ready to receive the blessings that you have through your servant, Jean. We'd like to thank you for her team, Father, for the voice of prophecy, who have been entirely doing your work to spread the gospel, to hasten your soon coming. We'd like to ask the Father that may you bless each of them as they continue with their ministry. We give praise to you, Father, for igniting their hearts with such passion that they would continue on to serve you and, uh, and influence others towards you. Father, we pray in a special way as well for those who are sick, who are, uh, who are brokenhearted, those who are unwell, for some reason, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. May you be with them, Father, and bless them and comfort them. And may you always give them bright hope and remind them that you're always there to help them. We especially pray for our brother uh, who had just passed away. Their we pray for their families. We pray for Colin, and we pray for the family of Niven. We miss them, Father, and we know that uh, uh, we will see them in, that, uh, in your soon return. That, uh, and we continue to pray that may also be with each of their families, Father, that may continue to comfort them. Father, we pray that may continue to be with our children here as they continue to grow. And we'd like to thank you for this support to you, Father, in which uh, in this program, this will be able to help them, of uh, nurturing them to become a better servant of yours in the near future. Continue to be with us, Father, as we serve you and worship you today. Dismiss us now with your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
inside me would I do the things I do would I think of his commandments and try harder to be true would I follow his example would I live more righteously if I could see the Savior standing night watching over me. If the Savior stood beside me, try to share the gospel would i speak more reverently if i could see the savior standing night watching over me Nice to see all of you, and thank you for that special music. It was absolutely beautiful. You did a wonderful job. Well, uh, we are here this morning, and I am wearing this ribbon, not what I normally wear to church every week, but it's very special because we are having a special family day here in Belfast. And I'm so happy to see so many of you. I bring greetings from our team at the Voice of Prophecy. 
We have been here in Northern Ireland and in Ireland a few times over the last few years, and it's so lovely to be with you. And we have a few of our Discovery Mountain actors with us, and I want to introduce to you one face that you know already, and that's Grace Bessia. Grace, so glad that you came up today to join us from County Cork. Is that right? Where, is that where you're living now? All right. And, we, and you play Ranger Brooke in Discovery Mountain. It's been really fun working with Grace. We brought her all the way to Gillette, Wyoming for Camporee a few weeks ago. We had a great time there. And also with us is Miranda Gomez, who plays Superintendent Gomez in the program. She's an incredible actor and a mom of three lovely daughters. And Ruben Gomez, my colleague at Voice of Prophecy and also the voice of Jake. So if you've listened to the program, you've gotten to know Jake. So we're so happy to be here with you. And you know, I am a small person and I feel like I'm kind of getting lost up here. So I am going to come down there and uh, continue from there. Bear with me just a moment. <laughs> All right, well, that's a bit better. You may have more difficulty seeing me, but I now feel like I can see you, so <laughs> this is a lot better for me. Well, uh, moms, dads, grandparents, I don't know if you are familiar with Discovery Mountain, but um, whether you are or not, just a note, I don't think, there it goes. Um, whether you're familiar with Discovery Mountain or not, I want to let you know about the best way to stay in touch with us and that's through our newsletter. You can find it by signing up at discoverymountain.com slash newsletter. There's also a link at the bottom of every page of our new website. Um, so please stay in touch with us. That's how we can let you know what's going on in the ministry, uh, when the, more about the programs that are coming up that week, and new fun things like the new Bible lessons we just released. So stay in touch with, that, uh, with us that way if you would. Well, this morning, we are going to take a leap of faith together, and we already started this morning in Sabbath school. We talked about one of the miraculous Bible stories from the time of the prophet Elisha, and you know, Elisha lived at an amazing time. Many miraculous things happened during that time, and uh, I'd like for us to look at another one of those stories again this morning together, but before we do that, let's pray one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that we have this opportunity to gather here on this gorgeous, sunny morning to worship you together. Lord, I want to thank you for this church, for the fellowship they have extended to our team, and the opportunity to fellowship together here today. Lord, go with us as we study your word together, and may we be blessed and inspired by the stories that happened so long ago, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, the story of Elisha. So in the time of Elisha, the land of Israel was going through a very difficult time. Not many people still believed in or followed God, but there were a few faithful people that still followed the one true God. Now, the Bible doesn't record for us the names of everyone who believed back in that time. The Bible often doesn't give us specific names of individuals, does it? But they all had names, of course, even if we don't know what they were. And I also like to imagine that, you know, they were real people. They had nicknames as well. And so just like we did in our story during Sabbath school time, let's imagine a nickname for the girl in our story this morning. So let's listen and imagine that this is the prophet Elisha. Let's imagine now that he is with us here and he is introducing for us this story of this girl. Hello again, Elisha here. Do you believe in God? Well, I thought so. I would have loved to see so many believers together in Israel like this in my time. Many of the people don't believe. And even the kings of Israel have turned their backs on God. But there are people of faith even in my time, including one man. Perhaps you've heard of him. His name was Naaman. 
Now, he wasn't from Israel. He was from Syria. And oh, but I love his story. You see, Naaman was a leper, and he took a leap of faith. Do you know there were many lepers in Israel during my time? And only one was healed in those days, and that was Naaman. And Naaman was from Syria. God noticed that, and Jesus even told his followers about Naaman. Ah, Naaman, I met him when he came to see me in Israel. How, you might be wondering, did a Syrian man, a very powerful one, end up in Israel? Well, it's all because of the faith and hope of one girl. There were few adults in Israel with as much faith as Sippor. Sippor, that wasn't her real name. But do you know what Sippor means? It's Hebrew for sparrow. Yes, this girl loved sparrows. She loved birds. And during a time when she could have been angry, she chose to take a leap of faith. And so here is Sippor's story. Daughter, daughter, come inside now, the girl's father called out to her. Sippor heard her father speaking, but she didn't quite hear his words. I mean, how could she? The sparrows were singing outside of her home. Daughter, her father said, coming closer, did you hear me? Oh, yes, father, she answered, but listen, the sparrows are singing. <laughs> her father smiled. You are my little bird, my daughter, our Sippor. Well, Sippor crinkled up her nose in delight. She loved her father's nickname for her. And one day, her father said, you will fly away from this nest, and I pray that you will take your faith with you. Sippor turned to her father. His voice sounded serious now. Oh, father, she smiled. I'll be with you always. I will never leave. You know, if only Sippor's words had been true. You see, just a few days later, she left the family nest. And as far as we know, she never saw her mother or her father again. You see, Israel, Sippor's home country, was in constant battle with another country, Syria. And in those days, the Syrian army would swoop across the border. They would take animals, money, and even people. And Sippor was caught up in one of those border raids. And separated from her family, the girl was placed in a new home, the home of Naaman. Now, Naaman was a commander in the Syrian army, and Sippor was placed in his home to be a maid to his wife. And during her early days in this strange land, Sippor didn't speak. She performed her duties in silence, and each night the sad tears escaped. Dear God, Sippor prayed tearfully, why am I here? I miss my family. Sippor wiped her face and fell onto her little bed. She couldn't sleep, though. She felt angry. She felt afraid. Why is this happening? She shouted out to God. Her voice was full of the anger and frustration that she felt. Understandably, right? And then she remembered her parents and her father's wish that she take her faith with her. She remembered the stories that she had heard, stories of God's miracles, of the woman and her sons, and of the never-ending oil. You've heard that story before, too. Sippor remembered, and that night, her anger quieted, and she took a leap of faith. Now, even though she was far from home, she chose to have hope and faith in God. Well, the next day, when her mistress asked her, please sweep the floor, Sippor answered, yes, mistress, she said. Naaman's wife was startled. The girl spoke. She smiled at her, and Sippor smiled back. Well, that same day, Sippor was hanging the washing out to dry when she heard a familiar sound. It was 
sparrows singing. She smiled and she sang back to the birds. And her mistress approached her and said gently, I like the sparrow's song too. Sipor, the girl whispered. What did you say? Her mistress asked. Sipor, she said again. It means sparrow. That's what my family called me. Her mistress smiled knowingly. And from that day forward, everyone called her Sipor. Well, one day, she heard the other servants talking together. They were whispering together. One said, Commander Naaman is still unwell. His skin doesn't heal, his servant Gehazi said. Well, Sipor swept the floor quietly, but she thought about what she had heard, and she felt sad. Her master Naaman was always kind to her, and his sickness made her mistress very tearful and unhappy. Sipor didn't like to see her suffer. She thought of the miracle of the oil and of the prophet Elisha. If only her mistress and Naaman knew of the one true God. Now, when we think of leprosy often in the Bible, we think of the contagious version of leprosy. Leprosy really is a name for any skin disease. So I think we can assume, since Naaman was with his family and living in the home together, that his type of leprosy wasn't contagious. But it was a terrible affliction, nonetheless. Well, that afternoon, Sipor spoke bravely to her mistress. And this is what she said. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. The prophet, Naaman's wife asked? Well, Sipor shared the stories of Elisha and how he followed God, and how God had healed, how God performed miracles. Her mistress listened carefully, and then she shared Sippor's stories with her husband, Naaman. My wife, Naaman said, could the girl's stories possibly be true? She nodded. Sippor believed, she said, she has hope. Naaman rubbed his forehead as he thought. Now, Naaman's skin just wasn't healing. We don't know how long he'd been afflicted, but he was suffering and he was seeing no results. He wanted a cure. He wanted a cure more than anything. And so he decided to listen to these stories and to go to the king and to tell him about what he had heard. Gehazi and I will go and see the king, he said. And then the king of, Israel, of Syria said, then the king of Syria said, go now and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 changes of clothing. So Commander Naaman and Gehazi returned home. Your idea worked, everyone said to Sippor. Commander Naaman and the others will leave for Israel at first light. Well, Sippor was full of hope, Commander Naaman was going to see the prophet Elisha. Surely God would heal him. Oh, how she wished she could join them to go back to her home. Perhaps one day she could, one day she would. God, go with you, she said. Commander Naaman and his servants loaded his chariots. They heaped them full of silver and gold. They would offer these gifts as payment for the healing. And arriving in Israel, they found the king. Naaman gave the king of Syria's letter to Jehoram, king of Israel. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when, those, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened, when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. And so, sadly, Jehoram king of Israel did not have the faith of Sippor. When he read that letter, he thought it was a trick. Remember, of course, 
they are at war. They're at constant battle with this other nation. So we probably have to cut him a little bit of slack there. He said, no man can heal another man of leprosy. And of course, he wasn't wrong, that's true, but he forgot to turn to God and to ask for his help because miracles, of course, are always possible with God. He can do with, with what man cannot do, God can do. And so this letter that the king of Israel thought was a trick was not a trick. It was a statement of faith. Elisha heard about Commander Naaman's visit and so the prophet Elisha went to go and see the king of Israel, and he reminded him of the power of God to heal. And he said this, Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And so word was sent to Naaman. The prophet Elisha would help him. Naaman and his servants arrived at Elisha's home. We're here, Naaman said, looking out in wonder. He could hardly believe it. The man of God will surely heal me. Someone is coming out of the home now, Gehazi, his servant, said. It's Elisha, Naaman said, and his voice was full of hope, full of expectation. It, no, it, it's not Elisha, Gehazi corrected. It's only a messenger. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. And so as the messenger turned to leave, Naaman could not believe it. He was furious. Commander, one of his servants asked, seeing his face flushed red with anger, Are you all right? Elisha didn't even come out and see me, Naaman fumed. Naaman became furious. Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abna and the Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Now, as Naaman stomped off angry and disappointed, the servants thought for a moment, and then one spoke to Naaman, his master, and truer words have rarely been said than what the servant said next. And it's recorded for us here in scripture. If the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? Hmm. Well, Naaman listened to the words. It was true. He would have done anything to be healed from his skin disease. And so why would he not dip in the Jordan River? Well, in that moment, Naaman had a choice to make, just like Sippor had had a choice. He could remain angry that things didn't turn out the way he expected, or he could allow hope and healing into his heart and faith in God. And Naaman didn't choose anger, thankfully. Instead, he chose hope. And so Naaman took a small step into the water of the Jordan. His feet stepped along the sandy river bottom, and as they did, he took a huge leap of faith. Naaman, that powerful Syrian army commander, he followed the humble instructions of the man of God. He dipped down into the water once, twice, three times, four times, five times, and six. And his skin was still inflamed and diseased, just as it had been when he stepped in. But Naaman didn't leave the water. He stayed in the River Jordan, and he followed the man of God's advice. One last time, he lowered himself into the water. And after that seventh time, he was healed. He looked at his skin. It was clear. I'm healed, he exclaimed, as the waters of the Jordan rippled off of his new skin. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. 
Well, Naaman and his servants rejoiced. God had healed him. And quickly, they traveled back to Elisha's home. And this time, they got to meet the prophet face to face. And Naaman's heart, you see, it had been healed at the same time as his skin had been healed. And he showed the prophet Elisha his restored skin, and he also shared with him his heart. Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. Now, Naaman's servant held out the gifts that they had brought from Syria. The silver was worth about 115,000 pounds in today's dollars. It was a lot of silver. And the gold in today's value, it was worth about 2.2 million pounds. These were massive gifts that they brought. And Naaman offered these gifts with a heart full of gratitude and gratefulness for his healing. His anger had completely disappeared when he chose to take that humble first step into the Jordan River. Well, Elisha, seeing and hearing about these amazing, brilliant silver and gold gifts, he just smiled. And he saw that there was faith written on Naaman's face. He saw the motive behind the gifts, but yet he did not accept the gifts. He said to him, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. Well, why did Elisha make that choice? Well, you see, God had used this incredible miracle to show a powerful army commander from Syria that there is a God who heals and gives hope. He didn't have to pay for this kindness from God. God gave it freely. There was no price tag attached. And so Elisha sent Naaman, Gehazi, and the other servants on their journey back. And then he said to him, go in peace. And so Naaman and the others traveled back home to Syria. And Sippor was working outside when she heard the chariots in the distance. She finished pulling the weeds from the garden, and she washed her hands clean. She listened as the chariots stopped and her mistress rushed outside to greet them. Welcome home, Naaman's wife said. And then she cried out as she grabbed her husband's hands. Your skin, you are, you're healed. She hugged her husband. His eyes and her eyes were full of tears, tears of joy and thanksgiving. Sipporah watched it all from behind a terebinth tree. Then one of the servants walked past her. The servant smiled down at Sippor. Your faith made this possible, he said to her. Good work, little sparrow. Now come inside. Let's celebrate. Well, Sippor felt her heart swell. God had not forgotten her or her master. He hadn't forgotten what he had promised, the miracles that she had witnessed at home. Well, happily, she followed the servant inside, but then a voice stopped her. Sippor, it was Naaman. He was speaking directly to her, a servant girl. Uh, yes, Sippor said. She was so nervous. Sippor, Naaman continued, she looked up and Naaman said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Well, Sippor, just like in her early days when she was there in Syria, she was speechless. But this time she couldn't speak because there wasn't room in her words for all of the praise that she felt. Naaman somehow understood the girl's silence. He grinned at her and walked into the house. Come along, Naaman said. Yes, sir, she managed to say. Well, Sippor heard the sparrows singing. It was the same melody that they sang in Israel. Indeed, there was no other God in all the earth. Thank you, God, she whispered, looking up into the sky. Thank you. You know, God used both the prophet Elisha and this young captive girl to show someone from another land that God is real. Naaman could have stayed stuck in his anger, 
he could have stomped away without ever bathing in the River Jordan. But then he would have missed the healing, wouldn't he? Some of us here today, some of you, might be feeling angry or frustrated. Perhaps you feel angry that something you really wanted didn't happen. Or maybe you're angry and discouraged because you, like Sippor, had to leave your home, your friends, and move far away. Or maybe you feel angry because you lost a family member or someone close to you recently. Our anger can feel overwhelming sometimes, can't it? Anger is a big emotion, but feeling angry isn't a sin. It's something that we all feel. I mean, bad things happen in life. That's how it is, sadly. And anger is one of the ways that we react to things. But how we act in our anger, that's the key. How we choose to act when we feel that big emotion is our choice. So never forget that God is always available to listen to us. And so are the trusted people in our lives. Young people, if you're feeling these emotions, if you're going through things that are difficult for you, don't forget that you can talk to trusted individuals in your lives. You can talk to your pastors, your teachers, your parents. They will help you process what's happening. They'll be there for you. You know, you have a choice today. Just like Naaman, young people, those of us who are not so young, we all have a choice just like Naaman and the captive Israelite girl had. We can choose to stay angry or we can choose to take a leap of faith and follow God and have faith in him. And when we clear the anger out of our hearts, there's room for God's hope to flood in. He'll replace our discouragement with praise. One of my favorite verses promises this. It says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And so I want to ask you this morning, I see your little faces up there. This is for you too, <laughs> for everybody gathered here for this family day. Will you take a leap of faith just like Sippor did, just like the mighty commander of the Syrian army did? Will you choose hope and faith instead of anger and discouragement? Will you choose to believe that healing and hope are still possible. If you do, I want to invite you to stand with me now and let's pray together. Amen. Well, let's pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you for your incredible, incredible, miraculous healing in the life of Naaman. And thank you that that was recorded for us so that today, all these many years later, we can be blessed by that miracle and blessed by that story. Father, we need healing in our lives too. Um, it, it's likely not a skin disease that is ailing us or worrying us or keeping us awake at night, Lord, but um, we pray for healing nonetheless. We pray for each and every young person who is here, who is um, spending time with you today. Lord, draw them close to you. Um, protect and preserve them for a future ahead. And Lord, we trust you and we love you and we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Um, happy Sabbath. Um, we're going to sing Lord I Lift Your Name on High. Now feel free to stand or sit or whatever you'd like. So 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the girl who had hope. Thank you for the story of Naaman. As we part today, Lord, we ask you to be with each and every one of us here in this church and outside of this wall, the walls of this church, Lord. Be a blessing to this entire Northern Ireland, Ireland, and in the world, Lord, as a community, as a family, um, that we can work on this planet for you. And Lord, as we part ways, I'm reminded of your blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face upon you and give you peace. So as we go, we remember that. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>